Yo, still bills. What's the deal, man? Yo, I finally got back to the shop. I'm heading home. These roads look a little—they look a little stupid out here, man. So uh, it's gonna take me a minute to get home. So I'm gonna holler at the kin folk, the tools, the tools and fuse that fuck with me, man. But Pete came though, man. We gotta get into this shit, man. And um, it's something that's really been bothering me. That uh, ever since I um, ever since the uh, the fight on Saturday, bro, this shit really been making me aggy. Like I, I just, uh, it's, <laughs> man, it's irritating me, man. And that's um, stat pad, man. Um, the fact that they was about to put, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to take the main roads home. The fact that they was about to put uh, David Benavidez in there with uh, Jose Uskateki after how he looked on Saturday night, that shit really was nasty to me, bro. That shit was really nasty to me, man. Cause this ain't even a Jose who's could take it that just happened so, just so happened to catch a strap and you know got it snatched from him in his first title defense. This ain't even that Jose who's could take it. That dude ain't been seen since that fight. What three years ago? Even the announcers were saying, yeah, he's been fighting mediocre competition since he lost that fight. Since he lost that fight to Caleb Plant. And the fact that they was about to put David Benavidez in there for them to continue to perpetuate this narrative that he's this unfuckable fighter who's being ducked that don't nobody want to go holla at. That shit is gross. That shit is gross, man. Oh, man. Like, they just, I don't know what it is with the PBC in particular and StatPad, man. They're trying to do the same shit with Isaac Cruz. They're trying to do the same shit with that motherfucker right there. And I'm the fact that I'm arguing with a motherfucker who's um, trying to really convince me that Isaac Cruz will be able to deal with somebody like Michelle Rivera. That shit is nasty to me. And why is he able to deal with a Michelle Rivera? Because of how he looked. How he went 12 with Tank. Oh shit, we got a potential star in the making. We got a potential star in the making. So instead of putting him in fights that could really sharpen his uh, sharpen his tools, let's put him in with Gamboa. Let's put him in with Gamboa. And then when he scores a highlight knockout on fucking Gamboa. They can plaster that all over the place. Oh man, look at how he did Gamboa. Look at this knockout right here. Yeah, it's a good knockout. It looked good, but who was Gamboa at that time? Who was Gamboa at that time? Gamboa has literally not been right since Bud stopped him. He's he's been a combo dummy his past few fights, fam. Tank, Haney, Cruz. So instead of cultivating this dude in a, into a, into a, into a into a um a respectable pugilist they throw him in there with gambo and then they throw him in there immediately after with a 126 pounder stat padding stat padding bro the shit has to stop the shit has to stop it has to it has to Jaime Mungia you have had all these fights that, you know, that could pretty much, it's a litmus test to let us know if you're ready for solid competition or not. I feel like when you fought um, Gabe Rosado, that was, a, that, was, that was a litmus test right there to let us know that, all right, cool, you're ready to step up officially. Why you have yet to do that is besides me. A lot of it has to do with the promoters because they don't want to let go, they, they want to protect the investment for as long as possible. They want to protect the investment for as long as possible because these niggas are so scared to lose because the general consensus nowadays is if you don't strive for, for perfection, then your career was worthless. And that is nasty to me, bro. That's, that shit is gross. Because when you do that, you stunt the growth of the fighters that you're, try, that you're, that you're, that you're going out of your way to protect. So when you get into a situation where you want Zerto to finally step up, look who he's stepping up against now. Before, and when he gets dominated, you want to sit there and ask you, you're, you're flabbergasted as to why he was able to look like that. There's no reason why Zerto Ramirez went in there and didn't put give up the same amount of give before the same amount of resistance that Canelo was able to give him when he came in as a fucking cruiserweight. A cruiserweight, but Ball is telling you, I had to go, I had to work harder with Canelo. I had to work harder with Canelo. Then Zordo, bro. Oh no, nah, this shit is pissing me off. I'm about to go around. He had to work harder with 
Bavar had to work harder with Zord uh, with Canelo than he had to do with Zord. That is a problem. That is a problem. That is what happens when you sit there and you coddle when, and you coddle your fighters. That's that's exact. That's a testament to what happens. That is a prime example as to what happens when you coddle your fighters. That is a prime example. You are not helping them. Protecting the, the investment hurts them. It hinders them. This isn't just a PBC thing. At least when it comes with top rank and uh, the zone, match room in particular, it's sink or swim. Not so much uh, uh, match room sink or swim, at, at, you know, in comparison to top rank, but you're going to have to, you, you, it's, you know, it's show and prove. It's trial and error. Edgar Berlinga is on his last leg right now. If he even still is under contract with them. Bob Aram ain't playing with him. The zone is putting they, they put they put their fucking fighters through the gauntlet to see if you got potential. So not only do you have the star power or whatever the case may be, and the talent to possibly be a crossover star. But you have the skill set, the the, 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 the the foundation to carry you over to where your talent may not necessarily be enough to get you over the line. Your talent may not be, oh no, your talent may not be enough to get you over the line in the sense of um, uh, uh, he, this, the fighter you're fighting might be faster than you. He might be faster than you. He may hit harder than you. Um, you know, he may have better feet than you. He may not, he, he may know how to operate better at mid this at mid rank. He may have, you know, just the little intangibles that come with being a solid fighter. You know, like just you may be outclassed in that regard, but you found a way. Your your IQ is so sharp that you've been able to find a way to work around it, like a Canelo Alvarez. Taylor Plant clearly had the foot advantage over him. He clearly had the advantage and feet over him, but he was able to work around that, neutralize that shit, and stop him to become undisputed. Laura, the same way. You have something that's going to completely contradict my style, but I'm going to find a way around it and beat you. That's how you are supposed to do. Oscar wasn't that. He was, so, he was slightly doing that with Canelo. Trying to protect him as much as possible, but he knew, all right, I have a star in the making, and this kid is talented enough. He can he's going to win these fights. But I'm still gonna put these obstacles in front of the opponents that he's facing so we can sweeten the deal on our behalf. Protecting the investment does not benefit the fighter, bro. It doesn't. Tank Davis being put in front of all of these fighters that he's fighting, him bringing up Hector Garcia from 130 pounds, that's being praised by the tank brigade. That's being praised. Mario Bar I Mario Barrios was a good win for him because he had to move up to do it. But he, Mario Barrios is not no he's not no factor like that at, a, at 140. He's not. He's not. It was a good win for Tank because he had to move up the he had he had to move up the fight. Good win for Tank. On that aspect alone right there. But Leo Santa Cruz. What are you doing at the, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Isaac Cruz, Rolly Romero, these is not dudes that we all like, why are, why is everybody swooning over this shit? And when he starts to meet resistance, how does he deal with that? How does he persevere? When Gamboa was giving him resistance, look at how he look, look at how he looked. Like he was ready to mentally check out of the fight. I, I, how do we like bro imagine like just how just, bro I, I just I don't get it bro like <sighs> Demetrius Andre the you know just the soft matchmaking how are you a two division champion and you haven't taken a belt from another champion You've caught two straps in two divisions, bro, but you've never took them from nobody. You've never dethroned nobody. What are you gonna do when you face resistance? Cause it's coming. 
I'm not mad at him fighting uh, 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 um, Nicholson. I'm not mad at him fighting him because he has to get amalgamated into the division. I'm not mad at that. I'm not. I get that 150 percent. Hey, that just that is what it is. I salute on that. You know, I, I'm not mad at nobody who wants to get their feet wet. I made a video about that. But what happens if that division is proven to be too much for you? Just on the size alone, just on the extra weight, the, you know, the, the extra weight that you've had to put on and maintain. Can you operate that at seven pounds heavier? I feel when you go through the gears and you go through certain, when you go through resistance and you persevere through that, that heightens that, you know, that heightens your IQ. You know what you can and you know what not to do in certain scenarios. You know what and what not to do. So can he stay disciplined and not try to go for a knockout against, against Nicholson? Can he do that? If that power isn't translating to 168 pounds, can he stick to a game plan? Can he get on his bike? Can he work off the back foot? Can he turn you on the inside? If those lead uppercuts is not working, if they're working early on, but you're realizing you're trying to put that much more leverage behind the shot so you can hurt him and possibly back him up and it's not doing that shit, can you switch to plan B? He's never had to do that because he's never been in a 50-50 fight, bro. At this level, as a professional, as a champion, what do you think is going to happen when he steps up? Now, granted, to his to his benefit, he's been trying to step up. He has been trying, but he also hasn't been trying because Johnny Beck was right there. You would have got more fighting Johnny Beck as a champion than you about to get on a fucking PBC undercard, bro. It just it's it's this shit is just really aggravating to me, man. Just how they <laughs> the middleweights want to preserve their O until they get in front of Canelo. They want to preserve their O until they get in front of Canelo, and they fuck themselves out of pos out of being like yo this is gonna be a good this is gonna be a good fight right here because they haven't been through the adversity that canelo has been through whatever adversity that they'll be able to throw at canelo early on in the fight he's gonna make those adjustments and begin to break them down as the fight progresses because you're not showing him nothing that he's never seen before i just don't understand with these dudes bro i don't get it I don't get it. Charlo is allegedly about to fight Suleki in February. It's only one so many tune-ups that you're going to be able to fight and get away with before it it turns around and bites you in the ass. What if he loses to Suleki? What then? What then? Nobody is going to be able to forgive you for that. I'm even seeing a lot of Charlo fans like, come on, man, I can't defend this shit. Suleki, I can't defend that. I can't defend that. But I don't think Suleki is a bad fighter, but he's not nobody that Charlo should be getting in there with. He's just not. Especially when you're over there on the PBC side of the street and you got goddamn Carlos Adame staring you in the face, calling you out. There's no reason why you shouldn't be getting in there getting that work with him. But here we are with Suleki. Right, what happens if he loses, bro? What happens then? Coddling these fighters and, and soft matchmaking it's a detriment to these fighters because when they step the fights that they want that can get them properly compensated are the fights that's going to get them fucked up because they have not been through the adversity that they will have needed to go through in order to persevere in that fight all these niggas want canelo they all want canelo i understand it i get it that's an easy 
10, 15, 20 million dollar payday, depending on who you are. Okay, look, Plant was able to get 10 M's out of Canelo and maybe some other back end money or whatever the case may be. Charlo is a little bit more higher profile than Caleb Plant, just on popularity alone. Like, like I'm not about to sit here and say none of them niggas is box office. None of them. None of them are box office. None of them are box office. But David Benavidez being a Mexican. David Benavidez being a Mexican. And Canelo being a Mexican. Y'all can have that fight on Cinco de Mayo. And that would be a huge, colossal fight. And because David Benavidez is a nigga who they feel that can beat Canelo Alvarez. They're not just, it's not just going to be the Chicanos and the Mexicans who tune into that fight. It's going to be... It's, that, will pop, that will be one of the biggest PBC fights, uh, uh, selling fights. It would be. It honestly would be. So I get it. It's a payday, man. But what are you doing to not only get the payday, but ensure that you can get the victory? Fuck just getting the money. When you transition into the next life, you don't take that money with you. That money stays in your account. And it goes to your family. They're not going to speak on your money. They're going to speak on your legacy and what you did while you were on this earth. People are at a point with Floyd where I've seen a lot of people turn against Floyd. A lot of the LDBC have turned against Floyd because they just they don't they don't they don't like his get down. They don't like when we stand on something as a people. He goes against that grain. He don't like when we stand. You know, we we are standing on business when it when it comes to goddamn Gucci. You going to go? We we you making a video? You going and buying Gucci shoes and shit? Going in the Gucci store splurging? All lives matter, all that shit. Your integrity is what matters, you know what I'm saying? What you did, the, the legacy that you lamented in your life is what matters, not your bank account, because we don't spend that money. I can brag on your legacy all day. All day. That's what I'm, I, I can't identify with owning a jet. I can't identify with, you know, flying first class. I can't, I, I can't, I can't identify with traveling overseas i've never bro i've never broke it. i've never breached international waters I, i've never have i intend to but as a 36 year old man i've yet to so i can't speak to that but i can speak to what i saw you do in the ring is one of the greatest fighters to lace them up that's what matters that is what matters that is what matters Y'all want to preserve your oath for Canelo just to go in there and get beat because y'all haven't been through nothing to be able to deal with Canelo is going to bring to y'all. All these niggas, man, it's going to be a problem when Jaime Munguia steps up. You see what he just did with goddamn uh, uh, Johnny Beck? As pedestrian as Johnny Beck looked in his last fight, there's no reason why someone like Jaime, oh man, let's get that fight. Yeah, we'll take that. That's a much easier fight to make than Charlo. Why? Because you already tried to make a Charlo fight. Your man is the one who tricked that off. Your promoter. He said, no, I need the zone involved. We'll see if that fight happens again. You want Golovkin? I'm not mad at that. But is Golovkin even looking in your direction? And he has mandatories. He has mandatories. I don't think you. I don't think you're placed within the. I, I don't think you're number one in the in the belts that he hold in those sanctioning bodies to the belts that he holds. I don't know what it is about the WBO route that you just refuse to go down. But Jesus, you want a belt? You want a fight with Golovkin? Because I think at this point in time, I don't think Golovkin will turn down a unification bout. The least you can do make the make the pot a little bit sweeter. All right, cool. Let me go knock off Johnny Beck and get that work. You want to call out Charlo? You want to call out Golovkin? You want to call like, bro? What's the likelihood of that shit happening? Bob Arum is already on the, on record saying, "Yo, man, we will pay somebody a lot of money to come over here and fight this dude." Y'all don't want to do that though. What happens when you step up? Because if Correa can make you look like that, I can only imagine what Johnny Beck is going to do to you. Or even a Charlo. Nah, this shit's killing me. Ah, much better. Protecting the investment, that shit has to stop. Because y'all are stagnating these fighters, bro. Y'all are stagnating them.
as much as high as we speak and uh, uh, as high a praise people speak the tank he is stagnating fighting the competition that he's fighting he is stagnating Devin Haney fighting Jorge Linares and him going through that adversity that he went through and him finding a way to persevere through all that shit that has helped him tremendously he's a lot more articulate in the pocket now Look at how he fought with George Cambosos in the rematch. George Cambosos is not Jorge Linares. He's he's not. He not from a skill set standpoint or none of that. He's not. But him going through that advert, him be, him being able to do that shit in the in, in the in Cambosos' comfort zone that speaks volumes, bro. Lomachenko was still learning. After he lost to Teofimo Lopez, look at how look at the aggression that he's putting on, up that he's applying to these people now, to these fighters. Going through resist, fighting through resist, dealing with adversity, someone offering you resistance, and you finding a way to push back on that resistance and persevere. That shit matters. That shit matters. There's no reason why Tank should be pulling up a Hector Garcia. There's no reason for that. Fighting Roly Romero, there's no reason for that, and I like, I don't think that was all Tank's decision. I honestly don't. But at the end of the day, you're the fighter. You're the one that's getting in the ring. You had you, the way that Ryan Garcia told motherfucking, I, I'm not letting Oscar get in the way of this Tank fight. I'm not. So pretty much at this point, you ain't got no choice but it's you got to pay to play, and you gonna get me in that ring with Tank. We doing that. I'm not interested in nobody else. I respect that shit. I'm not letting Oscar get in the way of this fight. No. If you want me around, and at this point, it ain't like Oscar has Canelo anymore. You ain't got no choice but to... All right, cool. You got to accommodate him. Ryan's a moneymaker. He's an attraction. He might be the best, the biggest attraction you have. Actually, he is the biggest attraction you have right now. Jaime ain't it, and Virgil Ortiz ain't there yet. On popularity, on marquee value, Ryan is that dude, and you're stable. You have no other choice but to commandeer, and it is what it is. I can respect that shit. I can respect that, but I don't think that was Tank wanting to fight all of those fighters that he fought. But yet and still, he's bringing up Hector Garcia from 130 pounds, bro. It's the little shit like that that is, is, is those are head scratchers. Like, why? All they're gonna see, man, well, he's a champion at 130, not 35. Y'all gotta stop coddling these fighters, man. Y'all gotta stop coddling these fighters. When fighters start catching straps, you can no longer coddle them motherfuckers. That shit is out the window. The minute David Benavidez steps up, it's gonna be a problem. I don't know how he's gonna do it against Caleb Plant. Y'all can say whatever the fuck it is. Y'all wanna y'all y'all are so one track minded as if all, when, when a motherfucker gets a knockout on somebody, oh shit, he ain't gonna be able to so and so ain't gonna be able to neutralize. So because he did to David Lemieux what Golovkin did years ago, now all of a sudden he's just gonna blow through everybody. Mind you, at, once again. David Benavidez is being praised for knocking out David Lemieux. But Canelo is getting ambassador for beating the dude who knocked out David Lemieux years ago. How much sense does that make? The narratives, man. The narr it's just it's so much smoke and mirrors going on in boxing. It's nasty. This shit is nasty. This shit is nasty. I don't know how... David Benavidez is going to be able to deal with the fleet footedness of a Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant going in there and fighting a Canelo Alvarez is going to work dividends. A pressure fighter who has far more layers in his game than David Benavidez. Watch how that works in favor of watch how, watch watch the difference that fight makes between him because you know Anthony Durrell is a little bit more fleet footed than David Benavidez. David Benavidez comes straight down the line, no head movement. No counter punching like that. He doesn't work behind his straight shot, his long shots. He doesn't use his limbs to his advantage. He doesn't do none of that. He's coming straight down the middle. My defense is using my head. 
And when you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. What happens when he has to go on the hunt? What happens when he's getting, once he's in front of somebody that's giving him lateral movement? Walking him into traps. Caleb Plant is a good boxer, y'all. Making a miss, making him pay. What happens then? When someone ain't trying to knock you out, someone ain't in there trying to survive, they just in there trying to score and get you get, get to a points decision. What happens then? What happens then? <laughs> he could have had that in a motherfucking um and had he went and chose to fall Billy Joe Saunders. He could have had that. He could have had that. He could have had that look, but he he was just content with fighting whoever it is the PBC put in front of him. When these fighters start to step up, they are going to be in for a rude awakening. They're going to be in for a rude awakening. Stop coddling these grown ass men. Stop coddling them. Stop coddling them, bro. I love that Frank Martin and Michelle Rivera got in there. She got in there and ran that shit. Rivera's like 20, what, 23, 24 years old. Dope. All his flaws put on display live in color. So he has more than enough time to go back to the chalkboard and write all those wrongs. And I'm guaranteeing you he's going to do that shit. I saw the interview with him. He does not. He's, you know, that that loss is bothering him. That loss is bothering him. It's bothering his soul. Almost to the point where it looks like he's ready. For, he, if he can heal his wounds right now, if he can get all them blemishes and all, you know, let his, you know, let the, just take the swelling off of his eyes right now, he'd be in the gym. He'd be probably would have left, went, left, the gym, left the arena and went straight to the gym. That loss is bothering him. But because he's at a young age to where he can right those wrongs, he'll be all right. But what happens when you get further and further and further and progress in your career and you're unable to do that shit? You're not you're unable to, you know, you're unable to right those wrongs. My God. Stop coddling fighters. That's what it all boils down to. Stop coddling these grown ass men. These is warriors, these is glad modern day gladiators, man. They you insult them when you coddle them. Let them lose. Let them take a chance because they might not lose. Let them take a chance. Let them, dive, let them dive in the deep end. Let them dive in the deep end. Stop hindering these dudes, man. I, I, I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that. Because y'all not giving them the opportunity. You're not allowing them to blossom. You're not allowing them to go out and see and... and, and and catch their flaws before they get to a career-defining fight. You're not allowing them to do that. So now they look like a deer in the headlights when they fit in, when they in there with somebody who's capitalizing on all of their on all exploiting all of their wrongs in their game. And once again, the fact that David Benavidez was scheduled to fight goddamn Jose Uzcatecki is gross to me. That was gross. I'm glad they came up out of that. But, you know, he just signed, he just re-signed with Samson Lukowicz, bro. Like, what are we doing? You was just talking about, you You know, uh, you might move up and all that shit. How you going to you gonna be with, I don't know how, it's a multi-year contract. So, it's at least two years, at the very least. Which tells me, you're not about to move up to no light heavyweight. Because ain't no motherfucking light heavyweights over there for you on the Showtime side of the street. We all saw what Marcus Brown just had to do. He had to peace out. So it's just little goofy shit like that, man. Blind loyalty, bro. Like, th th just there's so much dumb shit that goes on over there. Blind loyalty, smoking mirror, bro. Y'all are hindering these fighters from growing. Jermel is the most accomplished fighter over there on that side of the street. Jermel Charlo is the most accomplished fighter over there on that side of the street. He don't allow the politics to get now to his favor. He, he, there is no politics to get in the way. Heyman controls the 154 pound division just like he controls the 147 pound division. 
But he ain't figure Run that. Bring his ass over here, but let's run that shit. I don't think Char I I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this, but I don't think Jam I don't think Jamel would allow politics to get in the way from a you know from a, a fight with him. I don't think he would. I think he, you got me fucked up. I wanna fight him. So man, stop letting stop calling these grown ass men, bro. That shit is just, it's just really bothering me, man. Just it's really it's really bothering me. It's smoking mirrors, man. It's talking shit from a distance. It's name association, knowing that you ain't even gonna be in the position to fight them because of the platform you on, and you gonna hide behind that. You gonna stand on that shit. And then when someone is in a position to tell you, all right, I'll come over there to your side of the street, it's a whole bunch of other smoking mirrors that go down. To make it look as if he's the difficult one to deal with and do business with. When in all actuality, it's y'all niggas who don't wanna give him a chance because you know what the possibility of you losing is. Talk all that wild shit about anyway just for Stephen Fulton to move up. Like, man, come on, bro. Come on. Oh, my God, man. It's just, it's just the, these, that stable stresses my soul, bro. And it's not, the bullshit is just not relegated to PBC. But a lot of the fuck shit that I see goes on, oh, it's a lot more rampant over there. Y'all just heard me, you know, speak on goddamn um 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 Jaime and Zordo. They were victims of that shit, of coddling, of ma soft matchmaking, man. All in all, man, I, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little long-winded, bro. But at, just stop coddling these niggas, man, and let them get in the ring. Let them get in the ring. It might be too late for Zerto to rebound off of this Baval loss. It's not too late for Michelle Rivera to rebound off of his loss. If Charlo and Andre lose in their next fights, if they so happen to get that old goals before they get to Canelo, I don't know how they bounce back from that shit. I don't know how they bounce back from that. Look at what happened with Wilder. He has yet to let go of Fury cheating him cheating him he's yet to let go of that coddling soft matchmaking protecting the investment stop doing that let these men be men we don't get that shit with the ladies they get in there and they run that shit it's you dudes who's acting like some busters and your promoters mainly your promoters let them get in there and run that shit, man. Let them lament their legacy so they can be remembered through the annals of time. After they transition. Don't nobody give a fuck about no goddamn Al Heyman. God damn. That's pretty much all I got to say about it, though, man. I'll get with y'all later, man. I got to focus on the road. Deuces.